here's the thing. Here's the thing. I can't talk about how useless and pathetic this movie is without first addressing how useless and pathetic all of you fans of this movie are. Because a, a major complaint, a major complaint nowadays is Hollywood, will you stop making sequels? Because a big complaint is all Hollywood does is they make sequels and remakes and reboots. So a major, a major complaint of all of you, all of you is Hollywood, will you stop making sequels? And then what does Hollywood do? Hollywood makes a sequel to the Beetlejuice movie. And what was your, what was all of your reaction to a sequel to the Beetlejuice movie? Oh, wow, this looks interesting. Oh, wow, I love the Beetlejuice character. Oh, this is going to be so great. You, you want to know what another complaint by you morons are? Hollywood, will you stop making movies that are nostalgia bait? We're sick and tired of all of these movies that are just nostalgia bait and relying on the fact that they're nostalgia bait to be able to get people to want to watch this movie. So what does Hollywood do? It releases a sequel that is prime grade A nostalgia bait. 100% pure nostalgia bait. What was all of your reactions to this sequel that was nothing but grade A nostalgia bait? Oh my God, you love the nostalgia bait. It was so, it was so cool seeing all of the references and the nostalgia bait that this movie was. You know what? You know, I didn't really like this movie. There was problems with this movie and this movie had problems and all that stuff. But you know what was really amazing? All the nostalgia bait that was in this movie. You know, it is fascinating to me how oblivious so many of you are that you're all full of shit. It really is. And, 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 and somebody has to exp and somebody has to point it out to you because ain't nobody else going to do it. So I have to do it because I I'm here for you. I do this for you. It it's just the kind of guy I am. Because ain't nobody else going to point out how so many of you have no goddamn clue what the hell you're, you're so full of shit. You, 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 are, you are so oblivious to the fact that, you that all of the things that you're complaining about, you end up supporting anyway. Like, <sighs> anyway. Now that I got that out of the way, let's talk about this dumbass movie. Now, oh, this, this movie, I don't, I don't even know where to start. There is, okay, you know what? I, I, okay, hold on. I'm gonna take a segment of this of the movie, which encapsulates and epitomizes how pathetic and useless and ridiculous this movie is. And at the same time, also establishes how pathetic and useless you as a, you fans of this movie are. And, you know, the general movie going audience in general. So we have a character named Bob. And apparently, okay, we have this character named Bob, who was a 10 second cameo, was a 10 second scene at the end of the original Beetlejuice movie. Didn't even have a line. It was just a 10 second character. Just, you know, head shrunk guy. And, you know, the witch doctor sitting beside Beetlejuice on the other side. That was it. And he gets a role in the second movie. For doing nothing. For being nothing. And not only is there Bob. But apparently there's a whole swath of them. I, 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 I don't even think they even have name tags. I think Bob is the only one of the shrunken headmen 
who has who actually has a name tag with a name on it. Everybody else's name tag is blank. So we're going to call them all Bobs. Not only is there just Bob, but there's literally an office full of Bobs. Who is and has Beetlejuice who is in charge of this of this office? I will get to how this movie screws up Beetlejuice because I can only handle and deal with one brain dead stupid at a time. Because I, I, I want to try to not segue as much as I used to. But we'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll get to Beetlejuice in a bit. So we have this office of Bobs. I'll just call them Office of Bobs. Now, later on in the movie, Beetlejuice needs to get Lydia from the living world to the afterlife. And to do this, makes a circle in a wall and then lights a fuse and blows up the, the, a hole in the wall. This hole connects to the office of all the Bobs. And Beetlejuice and Lydia enter the room, enter the office. Uh, Beetlejuice tells Bob to guard the door or whatever, and then leaves. And then what happens? All the Bobs leave. They, go, they, they exit the wall. They, they, they go through the hole in the wall. And they enter the living world. No alarms. The, po the police guy, William Defoe's character, he's got a... Nobody cares that at least a dozen dead... A, a, a dozen ghosts just wandered into the living, wor into the living world and no problem. No problem. A flesh bag... Lydia entering the afterlife or the underworld, that's a problem and needs William Defoe. I don't even know what William Defoe's character is. Needs not only William Defoe's character to hunt down the flesh bag, but needs a whole squad of police officers. The Bobs that left the underworld and are now entering and have entered the, uh, the living world. Now, apparently that's not a big deal. No, who cares? Oh, and by the way, by the way, they don't actually leave and leave as ghosts. What's, what's the bob? What's the bobs enter the living world? They're flesh. They're, everybody can see them. Everybody can see them and they're interacting with people. They're, they're at a store buying stuff. They're riding a bicycle. <laughs> and I'm watching this and I'm going, okay, here's the thing about a lot of movies and this bullshit excuse so many people have about just shut your brain off. The problem with so many of you is that you don't actually give a rat's ass about the world building that these movies try to establish. Unfortunately for me, I actually do. Even if I don't like the movie, even if I'm not a fan of the movie, I still give a damn about the world building and at least, and, and hope that the movie at least, you know, stays true to the world building. This movie goes, screw the world building. We don't give a rat's ass. And guess what? Neither did any of you. Because you all saw all of those bobs in the living world and went, yeah, okay, that's not funny. Ha, ha, ha. The fact that it doesn't make any sense was it was you, you were oblivious to the fact that it doesn't even make any sense because you don't give a rat's ass about world building. Here, 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 here's, the, here's the crazy thing. In the original movie, Beetlejuice wanted to marry Lydia 
so that he could enter the real world, into the living world. That's why he wanted to marry Lydia. Apparently, all that it takes for, for a ghost or a spirit to enter the living world is to just go through a hole in the wall that connects the underworld to the living world and you're good. Well, then why, did, why didn't Beetlejuice just do that? <laughs> here's here's the crazy part. Here's the crazy part. I'm actually waiting, stupid me. I'm actually waiting for the movie to address the fact that there are a dozen un. Oh, what's the word? Unregulated spirits who have now entered the living world. I'm actually, this is how ridiculous I am. I'm actually expecting that this movie is going to address it. Doesn't even address it. I'm going, okay, maybe in the after credit scene. Maybe in the after credit scene, they're going to address it and talk about it or, or do something. Nope, nothing. Here's the crazy part. Here's, here's the hilarious part. All of you who saw this movie, who are watching this video, are now realizing, holy crap, he's right. They did never address that. You were all oblivious to the fact that there are a dozen bobs wandering around in the living world and you forgot all about them. And you don't care. You are oblivious to what was going on in the goddamn movie. That's this movie in a nutshell. I, I, I can literally end this video and going, that's the Beetlejuice movie where nothing makes sense. There's no, there's no continuity to world building. Things happen for the sake of things happening because the movie needs it to. And any type of connection to the actual original. This is, this is a weird movie. This Beetlejuice sequel is a weird sequel because actually – not watching the first movie helps because it's, it's, it's actually a disadvantage to have seen the original Beetlejuice movie. Well, again, as long as you actually give a shit about continuity, world building, logic, and, you know, being having, having a, an actual plot. If you don't give a rat, again, I, but again, that doesn't really make any sense because since the majority of you, have no interest in being, you know, faithful to the world building. You have no interest in plot and character and stuff. The fact that you actually saw the first movie doesn't really doesn't really mean anything to you anyway. Because here's the crazy thing about okay, this is what I mean about having seen the first movie actually is a disadvantage. Because in the first movie, they establish that those who commit suicide are the ones that work in civil service. That was the joke. It was a joke. It was meant to be that if you commit suicide, your punishment is you work civil service for eternity. Here's the thing. At the end of the first movie, at the end of the first Beetlejuice movie, Beetlejuice is killed by a sandworm. And it's like, okay, but when we see, uh, but when we finally see Beetlejuice in the sequel, he's working in civil service. And I'm going, well, that doesn't make any sense because according to the lore, according to the world building, he didn't commit suicide. So then that means he shouldn't have to be working in civil service. He can be, he should be able to do anything else. Now, maybe, maybe, okay, you know what? I, I, I'll, I'll give the movie a, a, a break. Maybe it has nothing to do with the last time he died. It has to do with the first time he died. Meaning when he when his when Beetlejuice, you know, being uh, uh, still alive, that meant and he killed himself because again, you have to remember in the first movie he worked in civil service, which means according to the lore and the world building of the movie, Beetlejuice had to have killed himself. So we're going, okay, 
The reason he's working and the reason he's still working in civil service is because the movie's counting the original time he died, which meant he must have committed suicide. Except the movie shows a flashback in which it shows that Beetlejuice didn't commit suicide, but was poisoned. This sequel invalidates the world building of the goddamn movie. And the movie, but here's the thing, the movie doesn't give a damn. And you fans of this movie, you didn't give a damn. What did you care? Then we have Dolores. We have Dolores. I'm watching. We start off with Dolores. And we have, I don't even know Danny, uh, Danny DeVito's character, the, the guy cleaning the floors. He enters, he enters a room. And this, whatever, whatever has cleaning devices, the, the thing that actually washes floors, the thing that actually, the thing that actually washes floors, hits a patch of water, and apparently it short circuits the instrument that's literally designed to be able to wash floors. Anyway, so for some reason. All of this electricity flashes out of the, 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 the machine he's using and hits a whole bunch of boxes and causes it causes the various body parts that are in the various boxes to come alive. How? How does that? The, the the idea of this uh, the idea of this bolts of electricity i bringing to life somehow these dead body parts is so stupid and so ridiculous the movie might as well have just have had Danny DeVito's character look at the boxes and go booga booga and then all of a sudden all of the body parts started coming alive. As And here's the thing. As stupid as it is in having Danny DeVito's character just go ooga booga and causing all of the body parts to come alive, well, guess what? That's just as stupid and ridiculous as the electricity doing it because none of it makes any sense. Not only that, why is her body... In all of these sections, like you had, you had the father who was eaten by a shark, and the whole section, right, is all gone. Is there a box somewhere in the Lost and Found that has the rest of his head? Like this doesn't make. Sense. Why is she in separate boxes? Why is she in the Lost and Found? What? How is she a soul sucker? According to this movie, while she was alive, she was part of a soul sucking cult. Okay, so because she was part of a soul sucking cult while she was in the real world, even though she didn't have any powers of soul sucking, because she was part of a soul sucking cult, when she dies, she gains the power and the ability to suck souls? Well, how many other members were in this cult? Wouldn't there be a dozen or two dozen members of this cult wandering around the afterlife with these with this soul sucking ability? What what if I hold on? What if I was part of a cult, okay, of of uh, Superman worshippers? If, if in if in the, if in the world of Beetlejuice. I was I was part of a cult of super of Superman worshippers. When I die, do I enter the afterlife with the powers of Superman? Because apparently that's how it works. And then, and then she just starts wandering around. Like, why doesn't she? Does she have to go to Beetlejuice? Everybody who dies, 
Beetlejuice. Uh, oh, what was the mom's name? Delia. Delia, the father. Everybody who dies has to go through reception. Except Dolores, because apparently screw the rules, I guess. And she just wanders around. And here, here, here was the greatest thing. About, here's the coolest thing about this movie. You're thinking that Dolores is the main villain of the movie. Not even close. Not even close. Because this movie doesn't even have a plot. It's just a bunch of... It, it's literally a series of subplots that's laid out like a soap opera where you go, this little, you got this story, you got story plot A, story plot B, story plot C, and then story, then the continuation of story plot A, throw in story plot B for a little bit, go to story plot A. I, there was a, there was, there's like a half hour, during the movie, there's this half hour gap where you don't see Dolores. And Dolores ends up showing up for a couple of seconds. And I'm going, oh, yeah, I, I forgot Dolores was in this movie because she doesn't do anything. And I go, wait a minute, wait a minute. What does Dolores want with Beetlejuice to marry him? OK, because here's the thing. Here's the thing. While they're alive, right, apparently Dolores is part of this soul-sucking cult and to achieve immortality wants Beetlejuice's life and his soul. And it's like, well, why just Beetlejuice? Like, why just be like, why do you, why, why does Dolores need Beetlejuice's life and Beetlejuice's soul? And why does she have to marry him first? Just what, why couldn't she just like, like, why does she have to marry him to be able to kill him and then suck his soul? And how does she intend? And how does she intend on sucking his soul after she poisoned him? I don't know. Neither does the movie. Nobody knows. Nobody cares. This movie's just going. We're just gonna throw shit out, and we're gonna go under the assumption that none of you morons who are watching this movie have any idea what the hell's going on. I am laughing throughout this entire movie because it's just nothing is co nothing makes any sense. This is this is a comedy in which you laugh at the movie, not laugh with the movie. I'll tell you that right now. But I'm going, okay, so she wants to go after Beetlejuice. To what? Marry him again? In the afterlife? Why? She's already dead. She's basically immortal now. What is she going to do? Marry? Like, what's the... Hey, movie. What was Dolores' plan? Out of curiosity. Go find Beetlejuice. Force him to marry her again. Then suck his soul. And then what? She's still dead. I just... just but here's the thing about Dolores. It's an unresolved story. Because how does because we end up seeing a scene with the sandworm, right? And I'm going, okay, thank thank you, movie, for letting me know how you're gonna resolve the problem with Dolores by by you know showing the uh, sandworm. Because at the end of the movie, what happens? To get rid of Dolores, what is ha what happens? The sandworms eats her. And it's like, okay, but one little problem movie, and this is what I mean by watching the first movie and actually caring about world building and actually caring about story has a problem. Because in the first movie, you want to know who else got eaten by a sandworm? Beetlejuice. And you want to know what happened to Beetlejuice after he got eaten by the sandworm? He entered the reception area. Which So what's going to happen to Dolores after she was eaten by the sandworm? She's going to reappear in the reception area. And guess what? The problem is not resolved. Like this. I what is this movie doing? 
Like, did this movie not actually pay attention to what happened in the first movie? Or did this movie just go, you know what? Oh, Beetlejuice was crazy. Let's do all of these. Let's take elements of the first movie and just shove them into this movie, even though it does into the sequel, even though it doesn't make any 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 sense. Then then we have then we have uh, Beetlejuice himself, I, because I, I'm watching I I I'm seeing Beetlejuice finally appears in the movie, right? And he's the head of some office in civil service. And I'm going, why the hell is he working in civil service? Not again, even though the fact that he didn't commit suicide, that even if we take that aside, here's the thing. In the first movie, Beetlejuice hated working civil service because he hated following the rules, which is why Beetlejuice became an independent contractor in the first movie. That's who Beetlejuice is. A, a, a key element of Beetlejuice's character and personality is that he's a rebel and he wanted to be an independent contractor, which is why he was in trouble all the time. But in this movie, in the sequel, they're going, yeah, forget the, forget the main character trait that, 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 that uh, defined who Beetlejuice is. In this movie, yeah, he's just the head of, you know, a civil service department and actually actually wanting to be an independent contractor. Oh, and actually wanting to, you know, enter the real world. Yeah, he doesn't want to do that anymore. Here's the crazy thing. I would have I wouldn't have had a problem with that if the movie at least addressed it. That that alone is a movie. The whole idea of Beetlejuice Stopping to stop, no longer wanting to be an independent contractor, no longer wanting to enter the real world and just settling into the afterlife and just not caring. That's a whole character shift. That would have that would have been an interesting movie or a TV, a, a TV special or, or a short or something that that alone is a movie. And the movie is going, but this, but the sequel is going, yeah, we don't care. We just wanted that Beetlejuice is just in the office. And because this movie doesn't work if Beetlejuice is still an independent contractor, which is what he's supposed to be. Because again, he's been an independent contractor for hundreds of years, but after 30 years of, uh, since the last, whatever. So the whole idea of Beetlejuice's character is no longer the same thing. He's no longer the same character. Because here's the thing. Michael Keaton isn't playing Beetlejuice. He's cosplaying him. He is, this is not, this, this sequel is Michael Keaton not reprising his role as Beetlejuice, but cosplaying him in the most laziest, low effort way possible. Now, I get the fact that Michael Keaton is, oh God, I don't know how old he is, and he can't do what he did 30 years ago. Fine, I understand that. But the problem is, you could have still kept him as an independent contractor. You still could have kept him as wanting to enter the real world. Like, there was just... Then we have, uh, oh, what, oh, what, what, what's the daughter's name? Astrid. We have Astrid. We're at the end of the... <laughs> Here's the thing. In the beginning of the movie, we see that uh, Lydia can still see ghosts. She can still see ghosts. But her daughter, Astrid, doesn't believe in ghosts. Doesn't believe in ghosts. And then at the end of the movie, <laughs> this movie has the goddamn balls to go, oh yeah, by the way, Astrid could see ghosts all along. <laughs> what? 
that you're telling Astrid could see ghosts since she was born, but never saw a ghost ever. Never saw a ghost ever. I just. Then we have what I guess passes for the story, which again, as I had said earlier, it's just subplot, 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 sub. Like William William Defoe's character. What was the point of the police department? They don't do anything. And after after they go out because they they crash the wedding, right? They get frozen. The, the, the problem gets resolved. They get unfrozen and like, okay, I guess we're going back home. Like they don't serve. Like at least have had them go after the Bobs. Anything. William Defoe's character has no relevance in this. I, I, he, he, here's the thing about William Defoe's character is that my best guess is that he's a replacement for. The old woman that used to be uh, Beetlejuice's boss. Uh, the, 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 uh, I forget the I forget the couple that went to her for information and advice because she was basically uh, an information dump and an exposition dump to help explain what's going on and and, and get the audience to understand how the the afterlife works. I guess William Defoe's character was supposed to be a replacement for that. When it would have made more sense to actually still have, you know, that old lady who was uh, Beetlejuice's boss. Now, obviously, you couldn't have the same actress. I get that. But you know what? Just do what they did in the Matrix movies. Just change the person. Just change the actress and whatever. It's it's still the same character. But I I think that the audience would have understood why it wasn't the same actress and why she looked different. You could have kept the same old lady that was, you know, Beetlejuice's boss to fill in the role. But no, let's just have William Defoe's character for no reason and, and no purpose. And just, that, what was the other, oh, what was, what was the other subplot? She can see the ghost. She can see the ghost of the guy that killed himself, right? That boyfriend that she ends up going out with, but does it know he's a ghost? Like, like how does that work? How, I, I, I just, I don't. And then he exists just so the fact that, uh, she ends up getting tricked into going to the, after like, like this, this is a soap opera. This wasn't a movie. This was a soap opera with nothing but subplots and uh, hoping and, and so spaced apart that you actually forget some of the subplots until they're actually brought back up again. And you go, oh, yeah, I forgot about that subplot. This. Uh, this movie was a joke. It was a, it was so I remember a long time ago that there were these rumors that there was supposed to be a sequel called Beetlejuice Goes to Hawaii. And I didn't know anything about it. I didn't hear any plot or you know plot ideas or, or story ideas. But all I knew that the title was Beetlejuice Goes to Hawaii. And when I first heard that, I went, oh, my God, I am so glad they never made that sequel because that sounds so stupid. Now I wish that they had made, I, I would rather see whatever script they did for Beetlejuice Goes to Hollywood or uh, Beetlejuice Goes to Hawaii because that, that as stupid as that plot sounds and as stupid as that movie sounds, I'll bet you any money it would have been way better than, than this piece of shit movie. This was ridiculous. You know what? Hey, congratulations to Michael Keaton and, uh, oh shoot, I can't remember the, uh, the actress's name. All of the actors and actresses that got to reprise their role in this movie, congratulations on the easy paycheck. 
congratulations on the easy paycheck. Okay, that's fine. But other than that, this movie was a waste of time. This was a pathetic, useless movie. And y'all loved it. Guarantee, you know what? I'm actually going to go check. I want to see, I want to see what the Rotten Tomatoes score is for this piece of shit movie. Rotten Tomatoes, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. 77%. And 80%. (laughs) Let me me check IMBD. IMBD. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Seven out of ten. Seven out of ten. And you... Hold on. And you ignorant little shits have the audacity to go, why do they keep making sucky ass movies? Because you idiots keep watching them. <laughs> Seven out of ten. Eight out of ten for this dumbass movie. I. And you guys have the balls to go, oh, they, they, Hollywood keeps making shitty movies. How would how would you know the difference? <laughs> if you're giving this Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice movie a 7 or an 8 out of 10, how the hell do you even know what a bad movie looks like? Jesus Christ. I, I, I'm sure there's other stuff that I could... Uh, I could call up, but I swear to God, I, 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 I can't, I, that's all I can remember. I, I, this, this, mo- here's a, here's, here's one of the benefits of this movie. It is so forgettable. It is forgettable. And I am so glad it is because I don't have to worry about this. Oh, this, this was hilarious. Th- this, this movie was hilarious, but for all the wrong reasons and, you fans of this movie are all hilarious, but of course for all the wrong reasons. But anyway, uh, uh, that's it for me. Uh, I'm good. I'm done. I'm out of here. See ya.